The Poco F5 is still the phone to beat in 2024 despite nearing its first anniversary. But it's not the clear-cut winner if you're looking for a specific feature below the 20,000 peso range. Part of that is the increasing prices of smartphones in general, but some part of it is also the increasing number of smartphones released. I think we're at a point where there are phones targeted towards specific budgets, but the difference in price between these phones is getting smaller and smaller. And so, this made me think differently when reviewing the F5 in 2024. This time, we're taking a look at what kind of competition it's getting right now and where it puts the F5 in that competition. A few years ago, we would call the F-Series the best performing device at its price. But with the emergence of the Poco X series as of late, the best performing phone now belongs to the Poco X6 Pro, all thanks to its Dimensity 8300 Ultra chip. If we're talking about the most FPS you can get in games at the lowest possible price point, the X6 Pro covers just that. That's not to say the F5 is bad already, not at all. If I'm to compare it with what's available on the market right now, the F5 is second best in terms of compute performance. So the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 is still a high performing yet highly efficient chip for someone who wants to experience near flagship performance without breaking the bat. It's also a good step up for those who are still using the budget mid-range phones to this day. After nearly a year, the F5, at least for the 12GB RAM spec, remains fluid and smooth even after receiving a major update in the HyperOS. Speaking of HyperOS, the current global version I'm running at the moment is stable. There have been no major issues so far, except for one tiny thing. So when I have the always-on display turned on, there are times that the phone reverts to 60Hz when waking up the screen which is a bummer since I use AOED whenever possible. But that's one bug I noticed on the F5 with the latest HyperOS. There are a few changes to the UI now that Xiaomi has streamlined its Android skin, but the biggest addition is the lock screen. The lock screen is now more dynamic and more customizable, just like Apple's dynamic wallpaper. But with HyperOS, you get three lock screen types, namely Classic, Rumbus, and Magazine. All of them are customizable, from the font to the color of the clock. There is also that iconic depth effect on photos, at least in some lock screens for some reason, but unlike Apple, you are not able to add widgets freely. So if you want to use widgets, you would have to use one of the pre-built lock screens and just customize from there. Which is weird because Android is known for its customization, but Apple has them beat in this regard. HyperOS also makes use of Xiaomi's own font called Mi Sans. And the app launcher's search bar now looks like this. So regardless if you have an app installed or not, it'll give you the option to download the app from the Play Store straight from the search bar. HyperOS now also adopts Apple's charging style, wherein it allows you to charge the phone to 100% based on your usage in order to slow down the aging of the battery life. Finally, the camera app gets a slightly different look. It's also closer to Apple style, wherein you can change the resolution and FPS and video recording with a single tap, but also I like the way they give you some of the controls with a quick swipe down. While the Poco F5 is already a great and smooth performer, HyperOS makes it even better by making the animation and interaction flow fluidly. But if you're expecting big changes in the camera department, you might be disappointed because there's not a lot of change in terms of quality. The 64 megapixel main camera of the F5 remains a solid shooter if what you're up to is good sharpness with good diamond amp range and good colors upon hitting that shutter button. I say good because if you're looking for the best cameras at this price point, you might be better off with other phones like the Realme 11 Pro or the upcoming Realme 12 Pro. What I realized for the past year of reviewing cameras on phones, and this may not apply to some but I think applies to most, is that no matter how good the hardware of a phone is, if that phone is targeted toward a specific price bracket, the camera of that phone is never going to be better than its price tag. Which personally makes sense because they also want to sell their more expensive phones or they have other features in mind that are more worth investing in. We can talk about camera hardware all day, but if the developers or makers of these phones don't want it to be better than their price tag, they're stuck with that level of camera. In the case of the F5, it's a great technical shooter simply because it allows for great stabilization and great resolution when taking photos and videos, but the style it provides like the contrasty and dark look is not for all, if not most people. Again, 
the cameras can be better if developers want it to be better. And that's hardly the case when it comes to less expensive phones. Well, the battery life remains solid as well with little to no changes at all since the latest update. But I'm not gonna lie, I've been spoiled by phones that are 90 watts and above in charging rate. However, 67 watts is still very fast and very quick by today's standards. But what I want to point out, just because I happen to be reviewing the Xiaomi 14 as well, is that this smaller phone with all the physics involved sounds better, louder, and richer than the Poco F5 that has a bigger and more space for a better sounding speaker. But hey, at least you still have the headphone jack on the F5. So if you're looking for a phone in 2024 that's good in almost every way, the Poco F5 is still the phone to beat under its 20,000 peso game. But if you're not that type of person who's looking for the best overall device, say you want a bigger battery or faster charging or better main camera or selfie camera or maybe a screen that gets incredibly bright, this is not for you. I'm still looking forward to the day Poco F series gets dethroned in its segment, but until then, we'll just have to wait. But that's it for this one. Drop a sub or like if you feel like supporting the channel. And as always, until the next one, stay safe.